Yeah. It's the second season, and Komi still isn't all over Tadano, even after all they've been through. She still checks out his ripped body, but averts her gaze when he turns his head. Whack! By the end of this season, I'ma need these two to be official. And this season, Tadano ain't playing any games. He's out here pulling at Komi's heartstrings every chance he gets. Komi drops her pencil, you Butterfingers looking. So Tadano saves her by accidentally on purpose dropping his pencil. And in return, Komi shares her eraser with him. Now this doesn't sound like much, because it isn't. But both of them are still blushing so hard like a couple of fifth graders. Bruh, y'all about to be adults soon. Please, get more mature. Speaking of mature, we meet some new characters this season, like Katai. On the outside, he looks like he eats motorcycles and kills skyscrapers. But on the inside, he's actually a huge softy. But people don't know that. All they see is this terrifying human with super wiggly thighs and weird breathing powers. There's also Komi's little brother. You already know he pulls. And then there's this guy. Okay, never mind. I don't really care. There's definitely something wrong with him, but that's besides the point. We have a goal we need to reach here. Get Tadano and Komi to become true lovebirds. Tadano works a little magic. Komi is scared during a storm, and he calls her and comforts her. And Komi's mom gives Tadano the assist. She doesn't interrupt their phone call. We appreciate you. The next play shows Komi taking the offensive position. Tadano is super sick, and Komi pulls up and pours him a cup of... That kind of looks like urine. But it looks like Tadano likes it. Stupid! And then she goes into his kitchen and makes him a whole meal and blows on it. Getting all of her disgusting germs in every molecule of food. And then she tries to feed him using the... Choo-choo! But he's like... I'm a grown man, Komi. Let me shove it down my own mouth. I'm the conductor. He ends up putting it in his own mouth. Tadano feels so good, he falls asleep. Komi is staring intensely at her prey. And she's like, ah, it wouldn't hurt to tuck him in. And then she sees his hand. The same one Tadano has been using to wipe off all the mokos his nose has been secreting. Delicious! The same one he uses to itch himself every day. And she's like, I'm gonna need some of that. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. After all this, they are definitely gonna get together. Osana barges in and ruins everything. But that's okay. We still got time for these two to get together. Even though it feels like we're making the opposite of progress. This time though, they get some outside help. The entire class body knows Tadano wants Komi and vice versa. So this girl tries to give Tadano that almighty assist. Tadano was the one asleep last time, but this time the tables have turned. The girl sitting next to her get up and tell Tadano, Sit next to her right now. This is the beginning of your journey into fatherhood. Tadano plants his buttocks into the crusty bus seat next to Komi and starts feeling awkward as usual. He doesn't understand what the point of this was. It's over, bruh. We got him. I'm talking victory. Let's start brainstorming kid names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Komi wakes up from the best nap of her life. And Tadano's like, oh, hey baby. You must feel so rejuvenated after using my body as your pillow. <laughs> Komi realizes the events that just transpired and is feeling a certain way about it. All Tadano needs is a few more minutes of sweet talk and they finna take naps together every single day. Osana busts in and ruins everything again. They were so close, bruh. 
So close. Oh, son, if you don't stop sticking your head in every time they're about to- It's okay, though. We still got time. Valentine's Day is coming around the corner. It's a time for girls to show their love for guys via one of the most important things we put in our mouths. Chocolate. So you already know, Comey has got to give some chocolate to her goober. Comey goes to her friend's house and meets her siblings. For some reason, the anime immediately tells all of us their ages and reminds us of Comey's age. Hi. And then the following happens. What does this mean? Is there some symbolic significance to this happening? I'm not really sure to be honest. Valentine's Day comes around and love is in the air. Comey gives her homemade chocolate to all of the people she cares about. That's so precious. Tadano comes to school feeling like the man. He knows he's about to get some chocolate. Comey doesn't give him anything. <coughs> Eventually, he does get some chocolate though from Katai. He says it's friendship chocolate, but I think he's lying. Tadano goes home and starts having an existential crisis. He got zero chocolate. Boy chocolate has zero value. All he wanted was some girl chocolate. His mom tries to cheer him up by giving him some chocolate. But you already know that doesn't count. In fact, that might have made it worse. Hey bro, who are you going to prom with? Has anybody asked you? Yeah. My mom did. Tadano is feeling unreal levels of devastation. He's thinking about going to the bathroom. So at least he can say he made himself some chocolate. But then Comey pulls up at his house. They walk over to a nearby park. And all of a sudden, my man Tadano is feeling super chipper. He knows what's about to happen. Comey gave out the sorry brown balls to all of her friends in the class. That ain't real chocolate. She's been waiting to give Tadano something way more special. Something that really defines her love for him. She reaches into her bag and gives him a, bro, what the? A committee meeting report. And then she leaves. All right, I'm starting to lose all hope. And I think Tadano is too. Looks like that toilet idea wasn't so bad after all. Go, go, go. Comey runs back after him, calls out to him, and gives him the same sorry bag of chocolate she gave to everyone else. It's a friend chocolate. Yeah, we know. Just call him your brother at this point. Comey tries to save herself by saying, it's the best chocolate that I made. All I see is a bland looking sack of balls. You liar! The anime doesn't have many other episodes left. Time is ticking. I truly do believe these two would make such a great pair. Both of them have issues. Don't agree with me? Just look at Komi right here. What is going on? And look at Tadano right here. Really, what is going on? And for some reason, this season is stacked with characters hitting all-time lows. Why is Yamai still in this anime? And why is she worse than she was last season? Every time she's on screen, I don't want to watch anymore. Yamai is not the only one who irritates me. In fact, there's somebody worse than her. Oh. Osana does an excellent job of not only irritating me, but also ensuring that Tadano Jr. never gets born. I could go on about the ludicrous things occurring in this season, like the anime's obsession with breathing, or this Santa humping the air, or how some characters look interesting, but I'm not going to. Sometimes, you just gotta accept what can't be changed. The anime is almost over, but we got one last shot, and that comes in the form of White Day. This is when the boys give something to the girls that gave them something. So you already know, Tadano finna dish out some pressure. He puts on a sophisticated fit and traverses across town 
with a walk that exudes so much swag. In order to arrive at Comey's house, yeah. he's not playing any games. He means business. Comey isn't home, but her mom is. Tadano is about to leave, but let's not forget who's in the equation. She wants some grandchildren. She brings Tadano into the house and plops him in Comey's room. Tadano visually scans the premise and is in the middle of getting all wiggly with himself until somebody busts into the room. He expects it to be his teammate, but instead, he comes face to face with Daddy Shoko. He closes the door behind him and stares directly into Tadano's soul. On the way over, Tadano was big flexing, but now he's urinating on carpet floor. Daddy Shoko even takes a sip of tea while it's happening to further assert dominance. Komi arrives, smells the situation, and kicks her dad out. It's really awkward and stuff. Tadano is so nervous, he puts his mouth exactly where her dad did. Come on, man, get it together. He finally gets it together and gives Komi his gift. She got him chocolate. And for white day, most guys either give girls candy, marshmallows, or cookies. Each have their own unique meaning. So I'm guessing Tadano would go with- <laughs> Wait, what is that? Does that say hand cream, bruh? What is that supposed to represent? You imbecile! Well, Komi likes it, so he did something right. He also got her a single piece of candy. I didn't know it was possible to do worse than this sack of deer droppings, but I guess anything is possible. <laughs> All the intellectuals know what I just said was a facade. I have a theory. When Tadano was sick, his hand was slathered in mucho mocos, but that did not bother Komi one bit. In fact, it motivated her to grab a hold of his hand while he was sleeping. I think Tadano was awake the entire time. That hand cream is subtly letting Komi know. <clears throat> hey, next time I get sick, I'm not washing my hands for weeks. This season might have not ended with them becoming official, but that's okay. Progress is progress. Be buddy, be buddy, be buddy. I'm not sure why, but whenever Komi is in the anime, She's her shaky self, but during the transition cards, she exudes so much confidence in such mundane situations. She could just be playing some cards with family, or going grocery shopping, or just simply washing some dishes. Yeet. <laughs> Out of 10, what would you rate this pose? It's like 13, 14. I also really like the way Comey says bang. It sounds pretty cool.